Hey there, good morning. It is Monday, March the 29th. It is 7 a.m. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Give uh, a second or two for a few folks to come in and we'll get started. There's somebody's come in already. Welcome. Hey, Patty. So, welcome to Holy Week. This is the week that the Christian Church sets aside to remember all of these events, all of these big events that lead up to the crucifixion and ultimately the resurrection. So Sunday, yesterday was Palm Sunday, which is a day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem on the back of the donkey. People laying palm branches down in his path, uh, people worshiping the the triumphant entry of the Messiah into the holy city, um, riding on the back of a donkey, prophecy fulfilled. And today, Monday, is the day that we remember that he cleared the temple. Uh, the temple had become a very non-worshipful place. Um, people were being excluded from the temple. Uh, people were being excluded from worship because of the just the just the nasty things that were occurring in the temple. It, it had become a it had become a, a marketplace. And people were being charged money even to come in and worship. So uh, that's what happens on Monday. So we're going to be talking about that all week long. One of Kim and Glenn and my mom, my sister, Robin, Kim Smith. Um, so today we're starting a new book, the book of Mark. Um, so let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump in and get and get rolling. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this, this Monday morning. Thank you for all you're going to do in our lives this week, this day, this hour. Lord, we pray that you would uh, continue to nourish us with your word. And we pray that you would enable us to see in your scripture the things that you would want us to see, the things that you would want us to glean from it. Lord, we love you so much. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, so Mark is one of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark was the oldest is the oldest of the Gospels. When I say oldest, it was the first one put to paper. Mark was not one of the original disciples. He was um, uh, uh, a co-laborer with Paul. You see that Mark actually went with Paul on uh, at least one of his missionary journeys, but uh, fell out of favor with Paul for whatever reason and left and returned home, but was reconciled later on because of the actions of Peter. Peter and Mark were very close. We also call Mark John Mark is another name that we use for him. He went on to become known by the church as Mark the Evangelist. Mark actually met his end in Alexandria. He was there preaching in Alexandria and uh, later on and was, was killed, um, was martyred, drugged the streets, uh, drugged through the streets until dead. Um, that's how Mark met his end. Never, never recanting, never turning his back on the gospel, always holding the line that what Jesus did was true and real. Um, <clears throat> that's different. The gospels are all four. All four of the gospels have one character. And really, all of Scripture has one character, and that is Jesus. But um, every one of them tells the story slightly differently, um, almost four different perspectives. On the work so Mark was not an eyewitness observer of any of this Peter remember we said that Peter and Mark were really close so Peter was a witness to everything he was there in every event and so P, uh, Mark was able to take Peter's writings and uh, and put them to paper so that's what we see here remember in Matthew started out with the genealogy right so, uh, all these begats and all that and then the nativity story the story of Jesus's birth we don't see that in Mark Mark shorter it uh, it focuses on and really it's it's a really cool book so let's read together let's uh, let's jump in he says Mark March Mark starts out right writing this way he says this is the good news about Jesus the Messiah the Son of God it began just as the prophet Isaiah had written look I'm sending my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare the way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. 
talking about John the Baptist, obviously quoting the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. This message messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This John the Baptist character is so interesting because John's John was a cousin to Jesus. Remember, he was the son of Elizabeth, who was a cousin to Mary. He was older than Jesus by a little while, a few months. And we know that John the Baptist had one purpose, and that was to point people to Jesus, prepare, prepare our, our hearts for the coming of the Messiah. It was not about John. It was all about Jesus. What a powerful example for us today to live a life like John the Baptist, where our identity is completely and totally wrapped up in being a pointer to Jesus. I can't tell you a lot about myself, but I can sure tell you about Jesus, how he changed my life. Okay. So verse nine, one day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee because you know he was from Nazareth. That was his hometown. And John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly beloved son, and you bring me great joy. Okay, again, this is a commissioning of Jesus by his father for the ministry that lies ahead. Did Jesus need to be baptized? You know, um, that's, a, that's a question that we ask sometimes. It was really good for people to see Jesus get baptized. Jesus had not sinned, right? And plus, baptism does not save you. It is an outward uh, demonstration of our faith. But this is this is uh, the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist was kind of the out of the gate. This was the launching of the ministry of Christ. Because um, and this is verse twelve. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for forty days. He was out among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced, Jesus talking. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. All right, so we see here, we see John the Baptist, we see the baptism of Jesus, we see the temptation of Jesus. Again, that was in Matthew also. Just this in Mark, it's shorter. That he doesn't give as much detail. Verse 16, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. Okay, so Peter and Andrew, brothers. Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Or in other translation, I'll make you fishers of men. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Now, we're not really not, we don't know for sure if Jesus had had any prior interactions with Peter and Andrew or James and John, but it doesn't look like they did. This looks like this was the first experience that they had with Christ. That's what makes it so interesting because remember, these are family, these are, these are fish, generational fishermen. They've been fishermen for a long time. Their father, the fathers were fishermen. They were fishermen. And so upon meeting Jesus, not only did, did they leave their family business, they left their families. They were like, Jesus said, come follow me. And they dropped their nets and gave their hearts and lives to Christ right there on the spot. You don't see any discussion, any debate, any like what ifs or any of that. Full abandon. They bought in to what Jesus was doing. This idea of 
the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is near, is here, repent. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day began, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. How was Jesus able to teach with authority? Because he had authority. He was God. Suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Again, no introduction necessary. This evil spirit, this demon that was inhabiting this man knew who Jesus was. They know who Jesus is. Okay, And he terrifies them. But Jesus reprimanded him, be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Demons have to do what Jesus says. Amazement gripped the, the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this, they asked excitedly. It has such authority, even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee, and it's going to, that's going to happen, right? After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now, Simon's mother-in-law, that's Peter, was sick in bed with a high fever, okay? So this is, this is an interesting story. We don't see this in Matthew. They told Jesus about her right away, so he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her set up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. She gets up. He heals her of a fever. She gets up and cooks some supper. That, that evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. They are under his authority. Everything is under the authority of Christ. Remember Matthew 28. All authority has been given to me. Everything that you and I are going through falls under the authority of God. That's why Jesus says, "I cast your burdens on me. Because he says, all things work together for good. For those who love him are called according to his purpose. So, he says here, uh, verse 35, Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Okay? Prayer is good for Jesus. Prayer is good for us. Right? Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, Everyone's looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. Jesus said, i got to go other places. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are will willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared. And the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. It would have been hard for me not to do that too. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. You know, we put our faith and hope and trust in a lot of things, but the only place where our faith can firmly be placed is in, with the Lord. And we see that people are, and you know, there are people right now in 2021 that are struggling and who are looking for hope. Notice, Jesus, crowds gathered around Jesus because he had something that they needed. Not just the physical healing. We saw in Matthew, he was more concerned about their spiritual healing. Well, guess what you're, you and I get to do? As believers, <clears throat> we are his salt and light. We are, we are his ambassadors. It is our job to be Jesus to those people around us, to love them, to take care of them, to serve them. Jesus said, I, I didn't come to be served. 
I came to serve and to make my life a ransom for many. What does the Bible say? That you and I, Paul wrote in Galatians, for I have been crucified with Christ, and it is not I who live, but he who lives in me. And so, let's remember, let's let this, let's let, let's let this chapter marinate on us today as we go through Holy Week, thinking about who Jesus was. Um, you don't have a lot of opinions in this book. It's all Jesus, all the time. Watch how people react to him. Just the passers-by, his disciples, the religious leaders and authority. Watch and see how they react to him. It's a very interesting read. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. There's Rosemary, Wilma, Peggy. Good morning to everybody. Um, in case you're curious, all 144 of the Bible study videos that we have done in the New Testament since August are up on our YouTube channel, The Morning Watch. And so you can uh, look on my Facebook page. I'll put the website there. You can go there and subscribe. And every time we do a new video, I'll put it up. In fact, I'll put today's up just as soon as we get done here today. Um, it's an easy way to go back and find them if you want to refer it to someone else who may be looking for a Bible study to do um, and uh, we're going to roll on through Mark and Luke and John Acts and Revelation and then we'll see what God wants us to do from there alright let's pray Lord thank you for this morning thank you for this time together we love you we ask all this in the name of Christ amen alright y'all have a good Monday Holy Week we'll see you tomorrow for Mark chapter 2